I walk through the beautiful alleys of Valletta, past the Mediterranean sparkling emerald water and old city buildings, and met with the Maltese, who are preserving their traditions. Today, I'll go on a journey to find great Mediterranean food, including Malta's traditional bread baked early in the morning, and Malta's tuna, which lives in the deep blue sea. What kind of rare and beautiful scenery awaits us there? Malta is surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea and is famous for having an abundance of sea bass, bream, and tuna. Tuna is the most famous fish caught here. We now head to the sea to take a look at schools of tuna. We are at the Valletta bus terminal. Malta is one-sixth the size of Jeju Island, and there is only one bus terminal here. You can travel anywhere around Malta from here, something unimaginable in a city as big as Seoul. Some people leave, while others wait. It is a very familiar scene. Today I boarded the bus, which will take us to our destination. Finding an empty seat is not easy. You can ride the bus all day here for a mere 2.6 euros the equivalent of four dollars. Seoul에 어디 그 출퇴근 버스 탄거 같은 여행객도 많고 이렇게 현지 주민도 많은 거 같은. The people are from various countries and all have different expressions. The bus departs, taking some 40 people to our destination. After a 20-minute ride, the bus arrives at the small port of St. Paul's Bay on the northeast side of the island. We will take a boat to a tuna farm. But why is a crane attached to the top of the boat? It is used to load a massive amount of tuna feed onto the boat. All right, all right. The fishermen transport the feed from here to the tuna farm six kilometers away every morning. Fish? Fish? So what kind of fish? Uh, this one, uh, kabari. Kabari? Yeah, kabari. Pakale. Pakale. It is a tiny mackerel. This one I give to tuna. This one, tuna like it very much. Really? Yeah. The tuna can chop this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Also. I yeah, love it also. Also. <laughs> They have a ton of it on the boat. This one is thousand kilo. Yes, this thousand kilo. Thousand kilo. Three ton 정도 왜 이제 먹이를 준비해서 지금 가고 있는 거야? 먹이가 3 톤이면 아니 뭐. 
The people here started growing tuna when the demand for tuna increased worldwide. They lower a circular net 50 to 60 meters in diameter into water deeper than 50 meters to cultivate naturally born fry. The fishermen suddenly become very busy. What is that net used for? can regulate how many fish go down. So if they see it's eating many, they open, they open it. But if they, the fish stop eating, they will close it. It holds tuna feed. They say that when the tuna get bigger, the feed net is exchanged for a bigger one. The tuna in the net are naturally born fry that were raised since last May. The new feed net is placed in the farm again. And bags of mackerel weighing almost a ton are slowly poured into the four-sided net with a crane. In the once quiet waters, the tuna begin to swim about. As soon as the fishermen throw the mackerel into the water with shovels, the tuna smell it and gather around. A diver prepares to go into the water. He will open the closed feed net to feed the tuna. The tuna swim in circles around the net and churn up the previously calm waters. Tuna have a shiny streamlined shape and these particular fish are butterfish, the best of them all. There are about 1,000 tuna and one fish farm. The butterfish are strong, and despite their large size, they can reach 60 kilometers in speed even while sleeping, which makes them difficult to raise. A guest comes just as the butterfish begin their meal time. The naturally born live fish living outside the farm have smelled the feed in our gathering. The people wouldn't miss this action. They get busy fishing. They have caught this much in no time. They are able to catch the fish without any special fishing gear, and it's fun to earn a bit of money on the side. They have caught another one. <laughs> I cannot help but express my amazement. While they are totally immersed in fishing, 
the crane operator suddenly becomes busy. It looks like something has happened underwater. Then, a butterfish comes up above the surface. They are pulling up dead tuna from the net's floor. The huge tuna looks about two meters in length. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Eh? This one big. 참치가 죽어서 어, 죽은 참치는 바로 건져가지고 배 위에서 바로 해체 작업을 지금 하고 있습니다. The amazement over its huge size soon disappears as the sailors begin cutting it up as soon as it is placed on the boat's deck. Yeah, why do you the cutting the tuna? Uh, yes, yeah, because the stomach things, you have to dress it uh, and move the stomach things all right, move the stomach things. Ah. This allows them to prevent such deaths from occurring again. No fish, easy job. Because of that, he died. If he hungry, they supposed to chop more. But the liver is okay. He doesn't sick. He doesn't sick. Okay. The liver is very good. Yes, because if he hungry, to chop. Right then. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Why? Why? <laughs> you throw it away. Today, go, go eat. No, 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 no eat. No. 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 We throw it away. Wow. But people eat. But we. Sometimes we eat, but we have many, many, so we throw it away. <laughs> He's really throwing it away. They will sell the dead tuna at the market. This is the first time eating freshly caught tuna. After becoming an adult in November, butterfish reach a weight of 200 kilograms. Butterfish are expensive, costing more than $10,000 a piece. Almost 99% of those harvested here are exported to Japan. Then, where does the remaining 1% go? Masha Sulak is located on Malta's southern coast. It is a small fishing village 10 kilometers south of Valletta. Men preparing nets and Malta's traditional fishing boats, Luzu, are a picturesque scene along with the blue Mediterranean. The village became famous after becoming the biggest fish market that opens in Malta every Sunday. Hello. Hello. 
Hello. So what can I fish? You like to buy salmon? Ah. You have to buy salmon. You can take some fish. It's like a oh, eel. Wow. Wow. This is Korean for gumchi라고 하는 건데요. 물 속에 들어가면 이 뱀장 맞죠? 입을 크게 벌리죠. 내가 다이빙을 할 때도 간혹가다 볼 수가 있는데 상당히 위험한 동물 중에 하나입니다. 깨물면 손이 막 찢어질 정도로 엄청나게 좀 위험한 그런 뱀장어과에 속하는 고기죠. 이걸 여기서 보다니 <웃음> 먹는가 봐요. How much for this one? Two euros. Two euros for kilo. Okay. Two euros. How cook? How cook? Soup. Soup. Only soup, not. Soup. Every day or what? No, with the fish on Sunday and every week. The fish market is very lively with a large number of tourists. All the fish, large and small, caught in the sea are brought to this market. What kind of fish is this huge one? Swordfish. Swordfish. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's called Huang Seichi in Korean and has an interesting long and sharp snout. The market only opens on Sundays, so people from all around the island come here. Why, why do you come here so often every Sunday? It's many, yeah, but let's see, because the prices are not high. The prices uh -huh. big, big uh -huh. market, uh -huh. and they have choices to buy, many choices. Uh -huh. Butterfish is also sold here. She happily cuts one piece off for me. 이거 오늘 들어온 참치랍니다. The bright red raw tuna that looks attractive and delicious melts in my mouth. Different parts? Yes. The same price? Yes, they are all the same, yes. Because we buy it all. Ah. Yeah, again, the same price. Yes, they are all the same, yes. Because we buy it all. This one is the belly. Belly? Yes. Yeah, it's a big You want to try it? But this one is, is more uh, moist, you know. I, I like this one. You like this one? Yes. I give in to the temptation and buy some. Mesmerized by the generosity of the people and the wine selection, I only now realize that the day is almost over. The next day, the sun rises from afar. Thinking it is unfortunate I could not dive at the fish farm, I have found yet another tuna boat in Valletta to board. The boat goes much further out to sea than before. Very far away for us. Uh, in Malta, there are five, five fish farms of bluefin tuna. We are one of them. In that area, the government once he made an area seven miles away from the coast, from the land. We arrive at the farm one hour later. Despite the clear weather, the waves are high because we are so far out at sea. These are the worst circumstances to go diving. The 
저희 배 높이도 높아서 입수하고 출수하기가 쉽지가 않겠네요. On the heaving waves, with 20 kilograms worth of underwater filming gear, I jump into the blue water to meet butterfish. The water below is calm, unlike the heaving waves above. Suddenly, a school of slick-bodied butterfish crosses my path. It is amazing to watch tuna that weigh over 100 kilograms swim about in schools. A truly mesmerizing scene unfolds in front of my eyes. first company that we start normally harvesting in October, end of October we always start. When, then we blast, blast freeze the meat so it remains fresh, we, we, we harvest, we transport the fish on a big vessel, they cut immediately tuna and put in blast freeze so the freshness remains excellent. Then we send them by through container, by container to Japan. I have heard people say to be careful of nets when diving, but I never expected to be inside a net and viewing such a beautiful sight. When the tuna feed brought from land is poured into the farm, a diver enters the water and loosens the knots on the net. It is amazing to see the butterfish swim furiously toward where the feed is being poured in. After finishing his job, the diver suddenly heads somewhere else. Ah, it looks like there is a big hole in the net. No wonder there were fewer fish than usual. It appears that many of them made an escape through the hole. The fishermen tempt the butterfish with feed, but the fish desire freedom more than anything else. Called the runners of the sea, Butterfish are considered the most difficult to cultivate by fishermen around the world. The diver has to fix the net fast, but the waves that are getting rougher are a problem. He makes some quick repairs and decides to come up. The Mediterranean Sea and butterfish were amazing. Calling this the world's best aquarium is not an overstatement. I do not think it will be easy to forget what I saw under the sea today.
early morning the next day, before sunrise. I cut through the dark, following twinkling lights, and enter a store. It is Malta's most famous traditional bread shop. They are busy making bread here. The freshly baked bread smells delicious. Fitira is Malta's traditional bread. It has a delicious light taste. Making this bread is very simple. After leavening flour and water and fermenting it with salt, bake it in an oven and it is ready. The secret is in the oven. The bread is cooked inside out in it, which preserves the natural taste of the ingredients. 120 years. I think this is the secret of your bakery. No, no, the secret is the mixing. Uh, How you mix the bread. Kneading the dough is more important than the oven which has preserved the bread's unique taste for 120 years. It takes five hours to just knead the dough. The kneaded dough is cut into slices and then shaped into round pieces. It seems like the secret to this bakery is the veteran hands of the employees. It is difficult to do without practice. The bread's taste depends on the kneading and time. This we cut it. Mm -hmm. What we want to do? See it's all called them. See it's a long ones, uh -huh. or big ones and small ones, uh -huh. and then we left them about one hour uh -huh. in there, and then we put them in the oven. Yes, 상당히 간단한 과정임에도 불구하고 의외로 상당히 맛있는 빵이 만들어진다는 게좀 신기합니다. Bread is made 24 hours a day here, and despite the lack of a sign, it is the most famous bakery in Malta. Because it's so good, that's why I come here. They do it special. Oh. Every morning, Monday till, till Saturday, uh -huh. I pass from here, I buy fresh bread, uh -huh. and evening I pass again to buy another one. Every day I buy two bread. Okay. The entire process, from making the dough to kneading and baking, takes five hours. The bread is delivered to all parts of the country every day. Five, uh, five times. Mm. And then we have the, the shops. That's another delivery. But we deliver it door to door as well. Deliveries take place from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The bread is delivered within 12 hours of being baked. Suddenly, she honks her horn. People are 
a bit frightened now when they see you because they won't know what it is. Eh? The honk of the delivery truck lures women out of their homes. <laughs> Every day for the bread. Why, why? It's like a shop. Sometimes the truck delivers bread to people's doorsteps as well. Thank you. Here, the customer puts money in the basket, lowers it, and then the delivery man puts the change and bread in the basket. Elaine has been doing this for the past 25 years. It is not an easy job to navigate a truck through Malta's narrow and bumpy streets every morning. I like it. Because you have contact with people. There are people that won't be that nice, you know? But uh, that, that you can find everywhere, eh? It's not an only in our job. The, the worst part of this job is uh, when it's raining, because you still have to deliver. You can't say you're going to leave it for tomorrow, you know, because uh, people are still waiting for you, you know. The taste of the shop's handmade bread has been well known for 120 years. I found myself amazed at the persistence and philosophy of the Maltese toward their traditions, even bread. It has kept the taste of the Mediterranean alive to this day, like the tuna I tasted in the middle of the sea. Thank you.